Okay, so tonight we are talking about inviting, which if you are a newer coach, sometimes that can be one of the scariest parts of your business because you're like, oh, I don't want to be that person who's annoying. We've all gotten annoying messages, every single one of us, but I truly believe that there is a way we invite that is different than those annoying, weird messages you've gotten in your inbox before. So I want to quickly talk about how I invite and how you can invite and then give you a challenge for the week. It's a big challenge, so prepare yourselves, but I think it will be really worth it. I'm going to share my screen because I have a little presentation so I don't forget things. Hopefully that's pretty good. Okay, before we get started, though, I want to chat a second about May. If you have questions, by the way, along the way, go ahead and drop them in the chat, and I'll get to them at the end. But May is $20 off all challenge packs. I think there's been some confusion that they're all $140, but they're all all $20 off. So, like, the, the program-specific challenge packs are now $160. The annual all-access FOD challenge packs are now $140. So it's just $20 off across the board, which means that it's a great month to do millions of follow-ups. I personally am sitting at Success Club 8 right now, and I'm pretty sure all of them were follow-ups from months before because whenever people are interested and then price or whatever holds them back and you come back and you say, hey, like it's $20 off now, it's the perfect time to pull the trigger. A lot of times people do because they're looking for a good deal and this only comes about like twice a year. Um, the next thing is you guys, a lot of you guys already have points on the board, which is amazing. I don't know if, I don't know what's going on, but it's exciting. I don't know if the tanks has motivated you or if you've just found some fire in your belly for the month of May, but if you hit Success Club 10 this month, you will get a free tank top from me, which let me see if I can show you. I'll show you at the end. I've posted it on Twitter for more, um, but I can show you if somebody reminds me. Coach mentorship starts on Monday. So if you are a brand new coach and you've never gone through our coach mentorship, make sure you get in that group. And if you are a coach who has a new coach in that mentorship, I would also like you to be in it because it takes all of us. Also, if you're not on mute, I'm hearing feedback from where, but I can't see from where. So go ahead and put yourself on mute if you can. Um, May 18th, we have our third new flavor of Energize, which I'm really excited about. It's mixed berry. Um, Elena went on Spirit and Funk. She went to an event back in February and she got to try it. And she said it's amazing. More of like strawberry and cherry tasting, which is really super exciting to me. I think a lot of people are going to love it. And then May 20th, we have the weekender packages coming out. I can't remember all the specifics, but it's hydrate, beach bars, recover, maybe energize too. I can't remember all the things, but it's a small package. It's like 18 bucks and it's a, it's just a good thing um, for people to take on those weekend trips at the lake or the river or whatever. Um, real quick, I wanted to mention bond groups because I know there's a ton of frustration around bond groups. Um, it's very glitchy. So just give it grace and always have a backup plan when it comes to bod groups right now because they don't have it all figured out. It is a ginormous change. If you are brand new to Beachbody, you probably are very confused about it and that's okay. I just want to tell you, give them grace. It's going to take time. I personally am keeping most of my stuff on Facebook right now because it's easy. It's seamless. There are no glitches for me on Facebook. So that's what I'm going to do until it's kind of a little more seamless because I don't want to be stressed out and I don't want my customers, especially new people to be stressed out. So be patient. And then lastly, I want to let you know that Fit for More, our team, we have a really, really big goal for May, like a huge goal. We will be five star to seven star, somewhere in there. We have so many people who are so close to hitting diamond that there is no reason that five star doesn't happen this month. And as I was looking at our downline or at my downline this week, I was like, we could actually very easily hit six or seven star. Um, and seven star is really super possible. So what can you do to help? You can remain active. <laughs> you can grow your own business. You can hit Emerald and hold it. Dig in. Like now is the time. There is so much momentum going on in this team um, and in Beachbody as a whole. Since this whole craziness started, 
Beachbody has exploded because we have a solution to everybody's problems right now. Like we have, we have so many of the solutions. We have community, we have workouts from home. We have a lifestyle option that actually helps people get results. And I firmly believe this is the beginning. We don't know what the future holds, you guys. I guarantee you people are not going to be ready to go back to their gyms and get their workouts on maybe all summer long, maybe even into the fall. We don't know. So now is the time to keep showing up and keep people, keep showing people that we have an amazing option from home. I actually just saw on the news this week that some gyms, probably all gyms opening up, I know ours is, they're requiring masks for people to go and work out. And I don't know about you, but the, I, I want to pass out when I go into Walmart and I have to wear my mask. So I don't think that going to the gym is going to be a very sustainable option for people as long as this stuff is going on. Show up and show them what we have to offer every step of the way, because this summer, it's going to be huge. Like, I have no doubts about it. It's going to be really, really big. <clears throat> so with that in mind, I thought tonight would be a really good time to talk about inviting because a lot of people are terrified by inviting. Um, and a lot of people just don't want to come across salesy. When you talk to people about coaching, I feel like inviting is probably their um, biggest hesitation because they don't want to be salesy. And I get it because I was there. But sales are not bad. And I want you to go ahead and remember right now, like drill that into your brain that sales are not bad. There is a way to be terrible at sales. And there's a way to be slimy at sales, but there's a way to be really helpful with sales. Like think about all the things that you have and you own. Think about all the restaurants you love or all the products you own that you have and you love. Somebody sold those to you. And I'm sure you're not mad about it because when you buy something that solves a problem you have, you're not upset about being sold to. When somebody takes care of you and serves you well, you're not upset that they sold to you. You're really happy, in fact, that they sold that thing to you that helped solve your problem. And we have a solution. We have a total solution to a lot of people's problems out there. So I want to tell you about a sales experience I had. And I, I was listening to this podcast. I'll get there in a second. It's down there at the bottom. You've got to listen to it this week. But it's about sales. And she was challenging people to think about these good experiences that they've had with sales and these bad experiences with sales. And I'm sure all of you have heard me talk about my experience, my hair lady that I trust with my whole life versus the kiosk people at the mall. Like that's one of my favorite examples. But I started thinking about um, this past summer, whenever we bought my new car, I have a Toyota Highlander and it was like our first big car purchase together. And it was not fun because a lot of sales people are really super annoying. But we bought from the best car salesman ever. I will tell you, we shopped for months and we went to so many different car places and so many people, I felt like they did not care about us for one second. And there was this one guy on, I can't remember his name, but I named him Don. We went to a place in Fayetteville, Arkansas, or not Fayetteville, it was Rogers, Arkansas. And we went to two different dealerships. And the first guy, we told him what we wanted. And every single thing he showed us was not what we wanted. I am super specific. I was super specific about what I was looking for in a car, especially color. Like I wanted it to be like white or pearl or charcoal. And that was it. Um, I wanted it to have automatic like power seat, seat, stuff like that. There were just all of these things that I very specifically wanted. And he kept directing us towards things that were not what I wanted at all. He was like, do you want to drive this? Do you want to drive that? I'm like, no, I don't want to drive that. Several times, actually, he ended up talking us into driving things that I just didn't want and I didn't care about. And I can remember leaving and I was like, I don't, I told Ethan, I was like, I don't like that guy. Like, I, I, I don't want to buy from him. I didn't feel like he was listening to us. Like, it just wasn't helpful. It wasn't good at all. Wasn't showing me things I wanted. But Herbert is the guy that we ended up buying our vehicle from. And he was just so kind, so kind. And he listened and he helped us find exactly what we were looking for. And even would show us things that like, I would say something that I wanted and he would like build upon that and show me something that I was like, Oh, I didn't even know that would be an option. Like I would love to do that. And actually we went back and forth between these two dealerships and between these two guys a couple times. And the other dealership with Don 
actually had something very similar to what we got, but we ended up buying my specific Toyota Highlander from Herbert because of Herbert. Don could have gotten us the same thing, but I was so annoyed by him because I knew he wasn't listening to me. I could tell he just wanted to make a sale and he wasn't helpful. But for whatever reason, both Ethan and I felt so drawn to Herbert, the guy who sold us the Highlander, because he was just kind and he listened. And I started thinking, that's exactly how we can be as coaches. Like, you can get into a conversation with somebody and you can try to sell them what you're offering. You can try to get them to buy something for you because you want to make an income. Which way you want to go? Oh, somebody's not on mute. Let's see here if I can find them. Oh, mom, look at that little ant. It's so cute. Come. Oh, I think they're on you now. Okay, we're good. I just didn't want. There we go. Okay. So we can be like slimy and we can be in it for the sale or whatever, but people are going to feel that. If you believe in what we're offering and you actually seek to help people, then they will feel that, I promise you. But that comes down to getting into a conversation with them and not just offering every single person the same exact thing. Yes, I am starting a challenge group with the, the, um, the program Transform 20, but when I talk to people and get to know them and get to know their pain points, it's going to show me what I need to offer them besides just Transform 20. By getting into a conversation, I can see, do they need the shakes or do they need pre and post workout? By getting into a conversation with them, I can see, do we need to add on um, the nutrition package or not? Like it, you have to get to know people so they can feel comfortable with you and know that they can trust you to sign up with you. You are signing up to serve them. Once they say, yes, I want this challenge pack from you, your job is to serve. It begins at the sale of the challenge pack. Your work is not over then. So it's really important that you start on a really high note so they know you're with them for the entire year. That is your job is you are their coach. You are their mentor. You are their encourager. You're promising to show up for an entire year. And the better you get to know them right off of the bat, the better you can serve them. Like that's the important part. You don't want somebody who's going to buy a challenge pack once and then be done. Your goal is to help them through the entire year. Like you have so much to offer them. So don't forget that. And sometime before this week is over, I want you to listen to this um, podcast because it is so good and it will help you break that negative mentality that you might have about sales. So a couple important things. You've got to know what you're inviting to and you need to make sure you're inviting to something specific. So your challenge group, when does it start? You might as well get a pen and paper or be like, take notes on your computer because you're going to need this. When does your challenge group start? I want you to actually look at your calendar right now because it's super important. For me, my challenge group is starting on the 25th of May and I know that and I have until the 25th to get as many women into this challenge group as possible. I know the date of my challenge group the week before the month ever starts. You've got to know because you're not just inviting them to work out with you. You, you're inviting them to your community. You're inviting them to your challenge group. That is a whole lot stronger of an invite than, hey, do you want to buy workouts from me? Like, nobody's going to do that. The second thing you need to know is when are you going to switch an invite to coaching? I'm inviting to challenge groups and coaching every single month. I usually switch <clears throat> when I'm at Success Club 10 to 14. Um, but I know. I will have success club by the time my challenge group starts. I will be at success club 10 by the second week. And I will be at success club 10 before I switch to inviting for coaching. So I know that I pretty much have until May 17th to invite to coaching. I mean, to my challenge group and maybe a little bit less than that. And then I'm going to switch it over to inviting to coaching. So it's really important that you know when and what you're inviting to. How are you inviting? Polls. Make sure they're not just like, hey, do you want to join my group? Yes or no. Be creative with your polls. You could do a poll as simple as this. Which is harder for you, nutrition or working out? I promise you, I do that poll 
once a month and I probably get 50 invites out of it or more every single month. The more generic your question is, the more people are going to vote. And that's my goal. I don't want a yes, I want to be in your challenge group. I don't want a yes, I want more information. Sometimes, yeah, I will do those. Um, but a lot of times it's like, do you relate with how I felt before? Like maybe I'll share my story, my health and fitness story, and I'll ask, do you relate with this? And I'll get so many more votes on that than I will a blatant, like, do you want to join my challenge group? And my goal is to get into inboxes. So I'm asking polls I know people are going to relate on. Something like, I don't know, let me, let me think. Maybe take a picture of you getting ready or take a picture of your closet and talk about how before this, you would spend 30 minutes trying on clothes and throwing them on the floor. That was my story anyway. And I guarantee you, if I talked about that on my story and I added some polls, I'm going to get so many votes on that because people relate. Do polls, ask questions where people relate. That way you'll get lots of votes and you can then invite from those. The next way is post. That's super simple. Anytime you have a post relating to your health and fitness journey, anytime you have a post with um, your challenge group information, you can invite from that every single time. Same with stories. I saw you watching my workout stories and then invite from there. Or I saw you catch all my stories yesterday and then invite from there. And then lastly, especially if you're new or even if you're not, friends and family. If your friends and family have not all joined you, and they probably haven't, mine haven't even, uh, you have people in your phone you can invite. You may have people you live with that you can invite. You have immediate family members, you have cousins that you can invite, and don't forget about them. I know Morgan, for example, had one of her probably most exciting signups ever this week, an immediate family member that she's been wanting to help. And finally, after Morgan showing up for two years and probably who knows how many times inviting her, she finally has said yes. And there's nothing that feels better than that. Keep inviting them because you know that this could change their lives. And that was what really stood out to me with Morgan. And she, well, she wasn't like, oh, yay, two success club points. Oh, yay, $50. No, she's like, my sister's life is going to change. And that is the exciting part when you get somebody to sign up. It's not the commission. Yeah, that's a great benefit. It's not the success club points. Yeah, that's amazing. But you are helping somebody change lives. And you know that because what's, what's happened for you, like you can look at a million stories on our team and know that this invite is so much bigger than $50 or two success club points. You get to help people change lives. And that's reason enough to invite, even though you feel really scared to do it. Okay. I'm not gonna read these, but if you need to copy and paste, fine. But right now I'm gonna give you like, let's say five minutes because you can use these in exact invites this week and you're going to want a script if you don't have one because of your challenge coming up. So take five minutes and craft a few invites for your upcoming challenge group. Plug in your date if that's applicable plug in your program if that's what you need to do, but craft an invite that sounds like you that you would feel comfortable sending out. I'm gonna pot or I'm gonna mute myself um, and I'm gonna put my timer on for five minutes. Write you an invite in your I do it on your phone that way you have it to copy and paste.
Okay, that wasn't quite five minutes, but I feel like that was probably enough to craft a couple invites. Um, I'll, I'll keep going, I'll get to that in a second. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to share with you is my real invite flow. For those of you who are growing your team, I want to be really clear here because this is something that I struggled to do for a really long time. I think I knew how hard I was working and I um, sometimes hesitated to tell people what I was actually doing. Like I told them what to do, but I invite a lot of people. <laughs> and if I, I don't count, I actually have no idea how many people I invite, but I know it's a lot, a lot. And I think I was scared to tell people how hard I was working and how many times I was getting into inboxes because I didn't want to scare them away. But for those of you who are growing teams right now, my biggest advice to you is to share the hard work because I'm three years in and I feel like my team, our team could have taken off faster had I had I thought about what I was doing more and shared about what I was doing more, but I was so scared that people wouldn't want to work as hard as me. So share with people how hard you're working um, because you want people to be successful. So what I do, because I don't want to invite every single day, I don't want to overwhelm myself with that. And I don't want to overwhelm my followers with that either is in a week, like this week, I invite most the first two weeks of the month. By far, I invite them the most then because I want to get my success club points knocked out. I want to get my people in my group early on because I don't want to scramble at the end of the month ever. So Monday, tomorrow is going to be a hype day for me. I want to be so excited about this upcoming challenge group that everybody wants in. Monday, I'm going to create so much FOMO I'm going to go crazy talking about what they're going to get when they sign up with me. I'm going to give them all the details. I'm going to be so excited and I'm going to make a post and some stories that people can interact with. That way on Tuesday, my whole day is going to be inviting. I'm going to, I'm not really going to do a promotion post on Tuesday. Probably not many stories with promotion on Tuesday because I'm going to be inviting like crazy on Tuesday. And then Wednesday will come around and I'm going to do another big hype day, probably on Tuesday. Let's say I send out maybe 150 invites. I don't know the number. Maybe I'll try to keep count this week. Um, but then Wednesday, I'm going to do a huge promo day again. I'm going to be excited. I'm going to highlight probably something different about my challenge group. Maybe the trainer. Maybe I'll highlight like the type of program it is. I don't know. Maybe I'll tell my story. I don't know. I don't have a plan yet. But I know I'm seriously going to go really like dive head first into hyping it up and doing promotions. That way, Thursday, I can have another ginormous invite day. I'm gonna invite a ton. Then the last day of the week, Friday, I'm gonna combine them. I'm gonna be really excited again. I'm gonna do tons of promotion again, and then invite on that day. I don't invite every, every single day. And I don't do promotion type stuff every, every single day because I want my, I want my Instagram to be balanced, I guess is the best way to say that. So that's the way that I work it out in my brain. Whatever works for you is what works for you. But for every single thing that you're running, so say your challenge group, I would say you need, gosh, I don't even know what number to throw out there. If you are not inviting at least 100 people to every challenge group, you're not inviting enough. And I don't say that to make you feel bad. I don't say that to freak you out. I'm just saying, people need to be invited. I cannot tell you how many times I message people and one, they say no or ghost me, <laughs> but two, they say, I was just thinking about messaging you or I've been wanting to message you for a long time. People are scared. They don't know how to reach out or they forget to reach out and they need you to reach out to them. And many times the people who do reach out to me are people I've invited 15 times. People are not offended when you invite them. In all my invites I've sent, I don't even know the number, it's probably millions. I've had maybe three people say anything negative to me. And guess what? I don't care. 
most people thank me for real. A lot of people thank me for the invite, even if they say no, because my invite's not weird. It's not creepy. It's just like if I asked them to come over and have brunch with me, or I asked them to go out and get coffee with me, they can say yes or no. And I don't really care. I want them to say yes. Of course I do. But if they say no, that's fine. I know that they will probably come back around because they're probably going to keep following me. And I also know that there are five to 10 other women following me today that are ready to sign up. They might just need me to invite them first because they're too scared to come to me. So make sure like you have got to get in people's invite or in people's inboxes, even if you feel scared, your business will never move forward if you don't. <clears throat> okay, so your invite is the first step, but then you're probably going to get into a conversation. You're not going to say, hey, I saw you touch my post. Do you want to do this with me? And they say, yes, sign me up. They're probably going to say something like, I've been, sorry, I have like pregnancy something going on. I feel like I'm about to project our vomit on you and it keeps coming. I'm fine, I promise. <laughs> but people usually aren't like, yes, sign me up right now. They usually have lots of questions. So just remember to be like Herbert, the guy that we bought our vehicle from, because you can't help her until you know her. Herbert asked me the right questions. And not only did he ask me, but he listened to me and he showed me what I needed and what I was looking for. He wasn't like Don who just showed me every freaking SUV on the lot, no matter what color it was, what size it was, or whether it had what I asked for at all. Your job after the initial invite is to help her, to get to know her. So ask her questions. Don't word vomit exactly what she's going to get the second she asks you the price. You are in control of the conversation, okay? A lot of times people will say, I've been so interested, how much does it cost? And guess what? I ignore the first question. I don't, I'm not telling her how much it costs right off the bat because she's gonna be scared to death. It is a big investment. So before I tell her the cost of it, I wanna tell her what she's going to get out of it. So 100% of the time, make sure you sell your strength as a coach and your groups plus your community and know that the products are extra. Our workouts are amazing. They are. Our, our nutrition programs, they're amazing. Energize is amazing. But none of that, none of it compares to you as the coach. So when you're talking to somebody about what you offer, do not undersell you as a coach because she will be successful because of you and because of what you offer and because of this community that you've created. That's why we all see success. I think we can agree on that. If I was doing these same programs and I had Energize still and the meal plans, they would have worked for a little while until I got bored and then I would have moved on. There is power in our community and you've got to know that. Like invite from that place of knowing how helpful all of this has been for you and make sure you tell them why they will be successful with you as a coach in your group. That is the most important piece, okay? So on that note, a couple people have had a, well, a lot of us have had a lot of people try to get into our group with like the free trial. I know it's been a big thing, but I'm just gonna tell you, set boundaries that you feel good with, okay? I'm not, I'm not gonna tell you how to run your group or how to run your business, but you make sure you have boundaries. You work really hard, you help people, you spend lots of time, and it's okay to want to be compensated, okay? Just wanna throw that out there. Okay, so here's your challenge. Every last one of you, and it's a big one, your challenge is to send out 150 invites this week. That invite that I asked you to craft earlier, use that invite 150 times, I don't care. I do that, I copy and paste all my invites because I love my invites. They sound exactly like me, they're genuine, and it works for me. 150 invites before next Sunday. If you need to keep track of it, if you need to like check in with your accountability partner, if you need to post it and fit for more, I don't care. 100 and, 150 invites this week. 
and just go into it knowing that most people are going to ignore you and most people are going to say no and that's okay, okay? I promise you, if you get into the habit of inviting 100 to 150 a week, that's gonna compound over time and you probably, after a while, won't have a hard time hitting success club because people will be ready because of the work that you've put in consistently. And it doesn't have to take you that long. I can crank out 150 invites tomorrow. And in fact, I probably will based off of my post from last week. Actually, Tuesday is when I'll be doing that. But you can, you can do that. It doesn't have to take you all day, especially if you already have your invite crafted. And then your second challenge from those invites is to hit success club six this week. Lauren Schultz has said it best. I've heard her say it the last, I don't know, a couple times in the last couple weeks. When she speaks her goals and when she makes a goal and she like says it out loud or she writes it down, she hits it. You guys, I would not hit Success Club 10 every month if I didn't tell myself and know and set the goal. I'm going to hit Success Club 10. It's just a non-negotiable. I don't stop working until I've hit it every single month. And you can make that decision and do the same thing. Any questions? I see lots of stuff going on in the chat. Let me check that out. Let's see here. <clears throat> Haley, same. I did not need to be invited either. Morgan, yes. No emotion attached to no's. It's okay if people say no. And yes, Lauren, no means you're working. Hashtag be like her. <laughs> Caitlin Smith, how many of those invites would you say are cold invites versus invites to people you've built connections with? I do not believe I ever send a cold invite. If they're watching me consistently, if they're liking posts, if they're voting, it's not cold to me. They've warmed. If I would never invite somebody who started following me yesterday unless they vote on something. But if they've been watching, to me, that's not cold at all. I think of cold as the lady who reached out to me literally no idea who she is the other day she's like oh i see your hair I, I said something in my story about my hair getting curlier because of pregnancy like that's the only thing i can think of and she reached out to me she's like oh my gosh girl i sell these products for curly hair you should totally look into them i'm like who are you what if i had been watching her stories fine that to me is cold um but i, I if they're watching me you are in my warm market. Yeah, Haley, I agree about the commercials. Lauren says, are you sending the 150 invites to people that are watching your stories and posts or cold invites? And what if you were inviting them just last week? Um, like I mentioned before, I don't, I don't feel like I ever send cold, but it's to people who are watching, voting, and liking. Um, and if I had just invited them last week, probably not yet. I'd probably give it another week and then I'd follow up. If they're still watching or liking. And Lauren agreed. It sounds crazy that your mindset can change things, but really, really it can. What if you don't have 150 people watching your stories or liking your photos? How do you invite that many people? Well, um, Shelby's video about making new connections. If you feel like you don't have enough people to invite, I would do that power half hour every single day, twice a day. <laughs> and friends and family. Yes. And honestly, if they're following you already, I'd invite them. And yes, friends and family, for sure. Okay, finally got to the chat. Does anybody have any questions? 